Hi guys, it is May 30, 2019. This heat wave, boy, this early heat wave is knocking me out and it's hard to breathe. Asking all of you in the states that are experiencing this heat wave, how are you doing? I'm experiencing heat very differently now and it's, uh, well, what's that word? Oppressive? All right, Oroville Dam and wildfires starting with Oroville Dam. You are pushing very close to 895 feet. 895 feet. 901 feet, it overtops the emergency spillway, that water from the lake. Um, and as far as I know, based on what I've heard other people say, dams that overtop, earthen dams that overtop, they begin to crumble. Do you evacuate? What do you do? I heard three days to evacuate Sacramento and well if it overtops how long will it get down to Sacramento the water? 45 minutes to well from another person said I think three hours but it takes three days to evacuate. What do you do in this circumstance? My God! And I got a comment from a subscriber who has no place to go. No place to go. Lives below the Oroville Dam. I've heard people are evacuating already. Well, that's because they have a place to go. Not easy for people to pick up. They work in the area. They live in the area. But you have so much information that is conflicting with those government officials who are saying everything is just rosy and fine and enjoy the lake. Just go boating. Go camping. Hey, why don't we put those who survived the Paradise Fire, hey, we'll put them down at the Oroville Dam, which is what they have done in our FEMA camps. Well, 894.95. Uh, let me refresh. They might have updated for your 3 o'clock yeah, 894.96 continues to increase. Seismic activity does not surprise me. 2 o'clock in the morning, th this morning, May 30. Well, I think in the video that I posted yesterday showing ultra low frequencies uh, being emitted from that area, and interesting, isn't it, that you still have this line of storms here. You've got a lot of extremely low frequencies crossing one another out of Nevada. This line of storms, and then you have the precipitation on the other side of the radar scattering. Um, still in the same place. I showed this yesterday. All right, well, the extremely low frequencies can cause seismic activity. Extremely low frequencies can cause earthquakes. And look at Southern California. Frequencies going off there. Got one shooting from Texas into New Mexico. You have this line of precipitation starting, a whole new fresh uh, row of, uh, I mean, talk about weapons, weather being used as a weapon. They look like little mini bombs being set off. But yeah, little mini bits of precipitation. They're all starting in the same exact place. Um, extremely low frequency emitted from, I guess, Galveston, Galveston. Um, but we still have these microwaves along the coast of South Carolina and pretty intense frequencies off the coast of North Carolina. Um, yeah, severe weather for Pennsylvania and New Jersey. <coughs> All right, well, seismic activity 
um, extremely low frequencies. It weakens the earth soil, extremely low frequencies go through our earth, go through the ground, and you know, everything that I'm seeing <laughs> doesn't make sense. Just doesn't make sense. So here, May 29, uh, 2019, current conditions for major reservoirs, Shasta, Trinity, Oroville, Folsom, and the others, well, Oroville, look at it, historic average. You're well above the historic average for today. In fact, you're 116% above it. You're at 98% capacity. Um, Northern, uh, the National Weather Service, Sacramento. This was posted yesterday, May 29. California snowpack has actually grown in recent days and is now almost double the average for the date for the date for May 29. This and unusually cool weather have allowed snowpack levels to about the same for the date as in the very what year? 2017. Okay, I posted on my channel, Department of Water Resource spokeswoman giving an interview January, January 30, 2017. And in that interview, the Department of Water Resource spokeswoman says, our cutoff is 855 feet. That's when we begin to release waters because we want to keep 50 feet free for snowpack melting for heavy rains in the spring. Guess what? That hasn't occurred this year. And guess what? It did occur in 2017. And you still had a problem with that emergency spillway collapsing. And guess what? Wow. Immediately, you have to evacuate. 2019, you're at 809, well, close to 895 feet. Still, uh, the spillway is not opened to release. So what do you have now? When that Department of Water Resource spokeswoman said, we like to keep 50 feet to capture the snowmelt. How much feet do you have to capture the snow melt now? Six? Something's wrong with this picture. But yeah, uh, to follow that tweet, Department of Water Resource said the snowpack had melted. They said everything was fine. Well, nothing is fine. Nothing is fine. Here, Water News Network um, posted yesterday or the 24th, California reservoirs near capacity in May. It's not over yet. Uh, atypical snowpack increase in May. The impact of the atmospheric river storms helped push snowpack levels in the northern Sahara to 172% of normal as of May 23. So you have atypical snowpack uh, rains that took place in May and still the Department of Water Resources is not opening the spillway to release some of that water well that means something is wrong with that dam sorry and it you know you certainly can see it when they're working at night and they're working during the day and this is a live webcam Hang on. This is a live webcam. Um, there, something is wrong. It's clear that something is wrong. So, there's no way when you have a Department of Water Resource spokeswoman give an interview two weeks before the emergency spillway collapses um, when the lake level had that 50% free to collect that snowpack, um, she says 855 feet is 
when they start releasing water. So uh, what do you do? How do you deal with this situation? I, I don't know. It's unfortunate, but yeah. Major reservoirs near capacity significantly above their historical averages as of May 23. Lake Shasta is at 97% capacity and at 113% of its historical average. You know what I find interesting? <laughs> well, what's your plan in case of a dam failure? May 28, 2018. And this is from Daily News, Red Bluff Daily News. But this article that I came across, Hooked on Fishing, canceled in Oregon. This is the Orville Mercury Register. Why did they cancel this Oroville Kiwanis Club? Uh, uh, well, they canceled it because the Feather River is just moving too fast. The Oroville Kiwanis Club is sorry to say this event is canceled due to the high flows of the Feather River through the pond at Bedrock. Uh, the swift flows is a concern for the safety of all children. This was supposed to be held Saturday. They canceled it. It's been an extra wet year. All right. Um, Feather River? That, isn't that what goes into Lake Oroville? Well, here. I didn't know that there was a National Dam Safety Awareness Day. Oh boy, well, you learn something new every day. But it's on May 31, and Pacific Gas and Electric Company urges those living, working, or visiting downstream of dams to have an evacuation plan and be able to recognize signs of a potential dam breach. Oh boy, okay. Dam safety and integrity are critical to our hydroelectric program, but it doesn't mean that it can't fail. So you should have an evacuation plan. And the 2017 damage to the state's Oroville Dam spillway led to evacuations in Butte, Yuba, and Sutter counties. The incident served as a reminder to those living and working near dams to have a family emergency plan. It's a good time to check with your county's Office of Emergency Services to find out how to get notified during emergencies to receive alerts about potential and actual flooding, severe weather, and natural disasters. Uh, okay, have a plan. Write down your evacuation route to higher ground. Plan how you will evacuate family members who might need assistance. Practice your evacuation route with family and agree on your safe meeting place. Keep an emergency kit with blankets, flashlights, food, water, medication, supplies. For at least three days? Well, uh, if the Oroville Dam collapses, sorry to say, but a lot of you are not going back home. Warning signs. Intensified sound of rushing water. Wow, okay. Increased water speed or depth. Feather River. Well, it's just running too fast. So we're going to cancel our fishing uh, event. Unusual amounts of debris in the water. If the water changes from clear to muddy, unusually cold weather, warm, uh, cold water temperatures. But if you're in the water, drop any items that could weigh you down, stay calm, lie on your back, keep your feet up and pointed downstream to avoid hitting rocks and to prevent your feet from getting tangled, go with the current and move diagonally across it until you reach shore. Roll onto dry land to dry your boots or to drain your boots, or waders. Well, hopefully you'll be wearing waders. 
Maybe you should just wear waders all the time. And if you're near the water, head for higher ground, turn on your weather radio to get emergency um, news. Stay out of canals and flumes. Canals. Ah, canals and flumes. All right. Um, you guys have to assess all of, the, all of this information, but it just continues to go on. All right. Wildfires in Alberta. Alberta. Canada. I don't know what is going on with my computer. Um, it seems to get really slow at this time, but wildfires force more people out of their homes in northern Alberta. Oh my god. Yeah, more people are being forced from their homes as several wildfires rage out of control in northern Alberta. Alberta people were being asked to leave immediately because a rapidly moving wildfire was threatening to cut off access to the area. This was Fort McMurray uh, back in 2016. And many have been out of their homes already for a long time, away from work for a long time. Leaders are urging patience. Wow. They spoke of this uh, orange and gray smoke. What is in this fire? What is in it? So danger to high level. High level is a community. I didn't know that. I thought that was the high danger high level. Well, danger to high level remains. And the danger to communities in McKenzie County and the Dene, the First Nation, sure, I butchered that pronunciation. Yeah, the danger has increased. More than 600 neighbors had to leave their homes. 5,000 have been evacuated. Um, the goal is to get the residents back home this weekend, those residents of high level. However, the wildfire, we can't promise anything. Um, read another article, they were claiming we have no idea uh, with the winds with these dry conditions um, and they note the strange fire behavior so um, yeah whipping up the winds special air quality statement for Alberta yeah warning people might be experiencing coughing throat irritation headaches shortness of breath Montana is getting the smoke hot, dry conditions, and gusty winds. So far, I have yet to read any home that has been destroyed, thank God, and no one injured. But they are saying it's growing. Well, here. Um, two wildfires burn a thousand plus acres in South Carolina. Amid record-breaking heat, they evacuated people from an area along Interstate 20. They're back. Fortunately, the evacuation, I believe, was lifted last night. Uh, and it seems that it's not just one, but two. They're still fighting both, but the and I can't remember what they called it. Um, it wasn't the memorial fire. It was named something else. They have that contained. Um, this Francis Marion National Forest, the wildfire that started on Monday, named the memorial fire, are continuing to suppress a fire that has covered 1,300 acres so far. Aiken County. 120, uh, I-20, in Aiken County, South Carolina. Uh, they're claiming that 
They don't know what the cause was, but these dry conditions, lack of humidity, dry conditions, the heat, um, well, those conditions are ripe for fire now. Um, we used to have heat waves and didn't seem to cause wildfires, but, well, it's the new normal. New normal. South Carolina forestry officials issue red flag alert amid heightened wildfire threat. Not just South Carolina, but North Carolina as well. Statewide red flag fire alert. Fires could just erupt anywhere in the state. In North Carolina, uh, I don't think it's statewide. A few counties, one of them, Guilford, which was uh, noted in the comment section underneath one of my videos. Gainesville, record-setting heat sparks wildfire. Worries. Worries. High temperatures in Florida. Very high. High temperatures here in South Carolina. Uh, Marion County, another county. Wildfire worries. Oh, wait, no. Wildfire. Yes, they evacuated, but I believe last night they lifted the evacuations. Residents, yes, residents are back home. Fire was caused by lightning hitting a power line during a small thunderstorm. Lightning is sparking a lot of the wildfires that we have been witnessing over the years. Some personally experiencing them, and I cannot believe. You know, I had to reboot my computer. It stalled. I just rebooted it. It was working fine, and now I I have no idea what, what is going on. Uh, um, wildfires forced more people out of their homes in northern Alberta. This, I just... Uh, got. They were asked to leave immediately because of a rapidly moving wildfire that threatens to cut off access to the area. Different fires have forest evacuations from the hamlet of Wabasca, uh, Big Stone Cree Nation, Northern Lights County. Yes, 5,000 people evacuated. Uh, Chuck Egg. Chuck Egg. Creek fire experienced extreme fire behavior yesterday and the hot and dry conditions making everything right for gutting a whole lot of areas. I will link below to this Canada fires near me, I guess near the author of this article, maps and evacuations for Alberta area and more. A lot of information right here on this page. Okay. All links are below. Stay safe, everybody. Ciao.